Sunshine asks, um, with receive, with RX values in the OSD, I'm comfortable with RSSI DBM, but what about LQ? If my LQ is 7100, what's my, what's my fail-safe threshold? Um, so the first thing you need to know, in case you don't know it, is that the first number in the LQ, the 7 colon 100, the 7 is your packet rate. It has nothing to do with when you're about to fail-safe or not. It's just as you change your packet rate, that number will change. And, you know, if you know your 7 is 250 hertz, I happen to know that because I fly 250 a lot. Um, so that first number tells you what packet rate selected. The second number is your LQ. And I would say that an LQ between 90 and 100, green light, zero issue, might as well be 100. You're going to see some normal variance from 95, 97, 100, 92 maybe. Anything between 90 and 100, don't even think twice about it. Between 80 and 90 is still fine, but like maybe a little bit yellow light. And then below 80 is like orange light. Just, uh, mm, I might fail safe. And then somewhere, well, probably not between 70 and 80, probably somewhere below 70. But the problem is that as you get to the edge of rain, it drops off quickly. So you'll be at like 75 and then suddenly it'll go 40, 75. And one of those times it's going to dip and it's not going to come back. So, um, yeah, I would say as long as you're above 80, you're more than fine. Between, somewhere below 80, certainly below 70 is where it'll fail safe. I'll say this is typically why if you really want to get figuring it out, you add the third thing which is snr yeah um and because snr tells you like hey am i near the noise cliff of where i'm going to see that huge drop off or am i just in a little bit of dip right now yeah and if you're yeah. getting close on your snr where you're, where you're getting to that drop off then you're going to want to be super more careful it's just a better indicator to tell you yeah and just to, just to know like express LRS trusts that enough to use snr as the increase in power level right yeah. that's how it knows how to increase dynamic power so it's, it is a good metric you can use as but i always tell it as a third thing like if you want a third thing to look at this is what to do well i would say honestly i would say that um, lq is the first and if i had one thing it'd be lq because lq is the sort of synthesis of all of the metrics that make up your link, right? Ultimately, if your LQ is 100, all your packets are getting through, you're good to go. Uh, the second thing I would want is SNR because SNR tells you how close to the noise floor you're getting. And SNR, you could, like, if you know you need an SNR of, say, minus 3 dB um, and you're at, like, minus 1 dB, even if your LQ is still good, you could sort of be like, oh, I'm getting pretty close to the cliff there. You know, realistically, you probably would see some reduction in LQ at that SNR. But um, yeah, if, I, if I'm if i at 95 uh, LQ and my SNR is 6 dB, I don't even think about fail-safing. Like unless I just fly behind a building or something dumb, I'm just fine, right? If, I'm, if, my, S, if my LQ is in the 80s and I'm at like minus one, then I'm like, oh, I'm closer to the edge. Go ahead. And also, I know I mentioned it, but dynamic power uses SNR to go up. So you're going to see SNR change, and then it's going to go down, and then it's going to hit a level and then bump back up when your power goes back up. So that's just one be of the, aware of that. That's one of the reasons I don't like dynamic power is I'll see the LQ drop and then bounce back up as, as dynamic power increases. Then I'll see the LQ drop and then bounce back up. And it's like, ah, ah, ah it's really distracting because I, my brain is trained that when I see LQ get down below 80, I'm like, oh, sure, I need to be careful. And I don't like seeing that happen. And then it bounces back up because like it, it's very distracting to me. And one of these times I'll already be at max power and it won't bounce back up. And then what? So I actually don't like to use dynamic power for that reason. The, the third and least useful thing would be RSSI DBM, which is the raw signal strength. And the reason that's not that useful is that it doesn't tell you anything about the noise level. So if I've got a if I'm in a very noisy environment, I might have a noise level of around minus 100 dBm. Uh, but if I'm in a very quiet environment, I might have a noise level of around minus 115 dBm. And so my my RSSI dBm is telling me what my signal level is, but not what the noise level is, and it doesn't really tell me anything about when, whether I'm about to fail safe. 
The place where RSSI DBM is most useful is if you think you have damaged hardware, a damaged antenna or a damaged transmitter. You put the drone on the table, you put the transmitter one meter from the drone, you, you set your transmit power to the lowest level, and then you look at the RSSI DVM, and if it is within a certain nominal range, then you, that's, you know you have a good antenna. And if it's, with, it's way outside that range, you suspect you have a bad antenna. But as far as predicting when I'm going to fail safe, I don't think RSSI DVM is that useful. The only place I use RSSI DVM in the real world is I power up the drone, I set it down on the ground, and just before I take off, I glance at the RSSI DBM and I know that it's usually minus 40, minus 45, whatever it is, you look, look, because you may have a different output power, you may have whatever. And if it, if I plug in the drone, set it on the ground, power up, I glance at the RSSI DBM and instead of minus 45, it's at like minus 65. I'm like, oh, hold on. I have a bad antenna. Something's not right. I should not fly. That's how I use RSSI. But then once I start flying, I don't even pay attention to RSSI DBM. It's all LQ and SNR.